So let's assume you have one table. I've, I've given a very simple example here, a very simple table. Here, we have only four rows in this table and three columns. Let's assume I uh, have this table or I have this data frame and I saved it uh, into row format file, for example, Evro format. So how data is uh, going to be saved on the disk? That's, that's what defines difference between row format and columnar format, right? So when we save this data, it goes into disk like this. So what does it mean? Data is saved in the disk in, in blocks, right? So in this example, I'm assuming that we have two blocks because it is very small file or a small data frame. I saved it in a row format on the disk. You can assume a row format. So data will be stored in blocks. So each block is limited size. So you may have one, two, three, four, or 10 or hundreds of blocks where your data is stored. But when you save it in the row format, each block stores the uh, row information. So what I mean here is, if you look at how that data is organized, so entire row one is stored in this block. All three columns of the row one is stored in this block. Block is bigger, we have a space, so row two is also stored in this block. And then third block goes into uh, second block, uh, third row and fourth row goes into the second block. Assuming that block one is full, uh, we don't have more space to store more rows there. And that's what we call row format. Row format means your data is stored in the blocks as a row. The entire row is stored in the block. It may, you're depending upon the row size or length, your block might store one row or it might store two rows or, or maybe 10, 20 or 100 rows. It goes like, like this in sequence, right? Your data goes like uh, all the columns of one row will be stored in the blocks block and then if space is there then next row is stored if space is not there then we will move to next block like that your data is stored that's fine it doesn't uh, make any difference for us but uh, what happens when we read this data so let's assume you have this data stored in a file it's a evro file and you want to read it now right and you have a query like select a star from table this table uh, where uh, column one is R2C1 and R3 or uh, R3C1. So what we want to do, we want to select all the columns. Select a star means we want to select all the columns from this table for this entire green row and this entire blue row, right? These two rows we want to uh, read. So what will happen? When you read it, Spark will go look at the uh, data blocks. It will look at the first block, try to find the result of your query in the first block. Uh, you need row two, right? Row two C1. So it will take the row one and give in to the result. Then it will move to next block and will again see, do we need uh, some rows from this block? So we need R3 uh, rows, right? Where R3 C1 is the value for column one, we need the entire row because we asked for select a star. So it will take this row from the this block. So it will take this row and give you in the result. And this is your result. This is your maybe data frame or uh, output of your select query, whatever. But this is how your results are prepared from the row oriented format. The point is, uh, we had to read all the blocks, right? In this query, to process this query, we had to read all the blocks. There is no reason why Spark can skip any of the blocks. You are giving where clause here, but uh, Spark doesn't know which block uh, may have data for this or which block may not have data for this. So there is no block level skipping happens uh, in this approach, right? 
there is one other scenario. Uh, let's say same table, row format table. Your data is stored in two blocks. You are doing a different kind of query where you are saying select call one and call two from table where call one is in these values where call one values are uh, one of these, right? Same query uh, like earlier, but this time instead of doing select star, we are doing uh, select call one and call two. We are only interested in two columns. So what Spark will do, how it will prepare your results. It will again go read the block one and see which row we want to take from this block. So we need our, this green row based on the where clause. We need this green row. So Spark will take this green row, only two columns. All this is there in the block, but because of the filter condition, all this is left. Only two columns are required, so it will take only two columns. But again, it will have to go to the block two and look for the more records that are required. So based on the where condition, it will realize, okay, we need blue uh, records, two columns from the blue, blue record. So it will take two columns and prepare your result. <coughs> and this is your result. The point to note here again is, again, we have to read all the blocks. There is no uh, reason why Spark could do a block level skipping, right? Because we, we don't know which uh, block uh, stores what all we know is blocks are storing row wise data right all the rows are stored in these blocks so i showed you two types of queries one is select a star query and the other one is select call one and call two query select specific columns in both scenario row based format will read all the blocks because data is stored in the uh, blocks uh, as a row. The entire row is stored in the block. So there is no block level is skipping. But now think about the second scenario. What happens if we have a columnar format? So we come back to the same table. Uh, let's assume that same four records, three columns, that table is there. And I saved it as a columnar format, maybe parquet format. So data is stored in the columnar format like this. So what happened here? The entire column, you look at this, this entire column is stored in one block, right? And then this column is, entire column is stored in this block. And then this column is stored in third block. You may have uh, two set of columns stored in one block, depending upon the block size, but Usually it is uh, like uh, all the columns are stored together. Column values are stored together, right? So I hope you understand the difference between how row is stored in the disk and how column is stored in the disk. In the row format, this all red will go in sequence one after other in the block. But in the column format, this entire column, column one, goes in a sequence in the disk block, right? And then this column goes in a sequence, maybe in the different block or maybe in the same, same block, but it goes in a sequence. And then third column is uh, goes in a sequence in maybe in a new block. So in columnar format, that's why we call it columnar format because we store, we, we store data like this, this uh, vertically, right? Column one, store column one, then store column two, then store column three. That's how columnar format is stored. And in row format, we store data horizontally. So take the entire row, store it, then take the entire row, store it like that. Now, if we try both the same queries on this table, what will happen? So let's see. So I have the same query, select a star from table, where call one values are in uh, these two values, right? So what will happen? Spark will look at the data and it knows we want to select all the columns where uh, we find these two values. So it will read the first block, look at it. Do we need uh, some columns from this? So we need uh, green column and we also need uh, 
blue column right uh, from this so what it will do it will take these two columns from the block one and then it will go to the next block and then it will take these two columns from the next block and then it will go to the third block and take uh, these two columns from the third block because we wanted two rows uh, with these values we got to two rows in this query to process this query also spark couldn't uh, uh, skip any block it has to go to all the blocks uh, there is no reason uh, there is no way for spark to know okay i can skip some of these blocks uh, and don't need to read all the blocks so for select star query even columnar format and row format behaves in the same way there is no advantage there is no benefit uh, for using columnar format but if you go to the second type of query where i'm using only call 1 and call 2 selecting only two columns for the same condition everything is same but i want to select only two columns how is spark will process this spark knows that block 1 stores column 1 for all the records it stores column 1 block 2 stores column 2 for all the records right for all the records column 2 are stored and block 3 stores column 3 for all the records so now we have some very vital uh, critical information with us right we know column 1 is stored in block 1 or block 1 stores only column 1 block 2 stores only column 2 and block 3 stores only column 3 my query is selecting column 1 and column 2 so i don't need to go to block 3 there is no need for reading this uh, block 3 right so what it will do it will go to block 1 uh, take two columns these two and put it in your result set and then it will go to block 2 take another these two columns again from block two put it in your results and that's all you are done you don't need to go and look into the block three because we know that we only need call one and call two and call one is here call two is here and block three stores column uh, three so there is no need for uh, going into the block three and that's why columnar formats are more efficient more fast for queries where you select only specific columns you are not doing select star if you are doing select star then spark will have to go to all the blocks but if you are doing a specific columns spark will go only those blocks which store these columns otherwise other blocks can be skipped so that's where columnar formats are more efficient why spark prefers uh, uh, columnar format or why spark prefers parquet as a uh, as a most uh, preferred uh, uh, storage format reason is in a typical case in any project we have large files we have large data sets we are where we store millions of rows but we have uh, big tables also where we have maybe hundreds of columns 100 columns 200 columns 150 columns 70 columns something like that right and if you look at the overall uh, query uh, in your application the entire if you have uh, maybe 500 queries uh, or 500 read operations in your uh, entire application most of them are not select star most of them are working on specific columns right and in general it is found that most of the queries in in a real life will be using specific columns and that's why it, it becomes like a general practice to use columnar format for data processing applications because they give you benefits of uh, block level skipping they read less data and they uh, produce results faster they are faster they are more e efficient mm -hmm.